Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Scott K. So I do get this question a lot. What plate does what? And what plate sounds like what? Well, if you recall, I did provide a more scientific analysis on the stiffness and the sound pitch of plates. So check that out right here. So today, I decided to actually show you how the actual sound of the keyboard changes depending on the plate that you are using. For that, I have the perfect keyboard to do it with. It's this thing, the HH60 by none other than Evan. If you recall, Evan is the engineer from Australia that's helped me numerous times before to understand sound and noise, both the airborne and the structure-borne kind, remember? Well, he decided to try designing his own board, and he sent me every plate to try it with. So, let's get started. Evan knows a thing about sound and noise or two. He's actually a noise and vibration isolation mechanical engineer from Australia. So when he told me he designed a board, I was excited to try it out. He runs a web store called Hong Hobbies, so check that out in the description below. Now, the HH60 is a simple 60% keyboard. It's a very nice and clean design with like no frill and no nonsense kind of approach to keyboards. I'll tell you what I'm talking about a little later. The case is a seamless design so that from the top, it looks like one single piece. It has nice and simple chamfers to create a nice and soft look as well. Now, what is so interesting about this case and design? Well, let's take a look. Once you remove the top case, you see this. What is this? Well, the HH60 is a bottom mount design. Bottom mount? Like tray? No, not tray. Think like a regular top mount keyboard, right? But instead of like mounting the plate to the upper frame of the case, this actually mounts to the bottom frame of the case. I only saw this design like twice before, once in the legendary K-Mac and the another in the KBD-8X Mark I, the original. Well, it's pretty unique, and I'm not going to like question it. I mean, I'm sure Evan knows a thing or two more than I do, so I'm sure he's got this, right? Plus, I also noticed that the walls of the case are on the thicker side and doesn't feature any brass or any other types of weight, so I'm sure he optimized it that way. Now the PCB. Overall, it's nothing special. It's a simple black hot swap PCB with no RGB, no flex cuts or anything. Flip it over and you got some Gateron hot swap sockets, they're like the KO ones. You also find a USB socket built right into the PCB to avoid any daughter boards or ribbon cables and stuff like that. So yes, simplicity is pretty much the theme here. Now, the matter at hand. The plates and how they sound, right? Well, Evan sent me all four of the plates to try it out. So starting from the stiffest, we got the carbon fiber plate. Then you got a pretty standard aluminum plate, then the FR4 plate. Finally, rounding out to the softest of the bunch is the palm plate that you see right here. I know this may sound crazy, it's 2023, right? But the HH60 comes with no foam, like nothing. No case foam, no plate foam, no PE foam, no nothing. Why? Well, the intention was to keep things pure, and Evan did this. Evan did his best to optimize the case design to still sound good without any foam. So you can be the judge of that later. Let me know in the comments. Going with the classic theme, I decided to offer a set of lubed Gateron Oil Kings for this build. They look pretty OG and pretty classic, and I felt it blended really well with this board. And for stabilizers, I decided to use some TX Snap and Snaps because they work. Before we jump into the plate options and assembly, let's go to a quick word from our sponsor, PayPal Honey. So, do you like shopping? Do you like to save money? I hope so, because every dollar you save is like two more switches. Well, then Honey is the tool for you. What is Honey, you say? No, it's not that kind of Honey. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America. It's essentially a little plugin for your browser that sits like right here quietly until you start the shopping process. Then BAM! Honey automatically searches for promo codes so that you don't have to do that. And as you're checking things out, Honey will show you that you can save money by using a valid code available for that site. On the average, Honey saves you around 18%, so that is actually pretty big. And the nice thing is that it saves you money on things that you're already buying on sites that you're already shopping at. Not just keyboard stuff, but also stuff like clothes, shoes, food, you know, stuff that people do and use, right? That also includes you, I hope. Best of all, Honey is free to use and it doesn't cost you anything. Get Honey by going to joinhoney.com keyboard to add the best tool that saves you money 
on their internets. So the first plate we'll be testing is the CF plate, the stiffest one of the bunch. Like I said before, this is a bottom perimeter mounted design. So you just kind of like drop the whole entire thing like this, and then you screw it into the bottom. Here is another look at how the keyboard looks like assembled. So it's actually very, very simple. Sticking with the classic theme again, I decided to go with a set of DCX Hyperfuse keycaps. I don't know, this has some like nostalgia built into it for me and overall, I think it looks still pretty good, no? It's very clean. So without further ado, the first sound test, the carbon fiber plate. So what did you think? The carbon fiber plate is definitely the stiffest. It does provide a more higher pitch sound. Pretty much expected, right? I'll add in the previous segment on like the plate stiffness stuff at the end of this video for you to kind of like take a look at if you want to take a look at the technical aspect of all this. So the next up, the second stiffest plate of the bunch. Ah yes, the standard aluminum plate. This is a pretty classic plate material and everyone pretty much knows what it sounds like. So. Let's take a listen. So compared to the carbon fiber plate, it definitely sounds a bit deeper and more substantial. Going back and forth from it, the aluminum exudes the classic sound profile, and in my opinion, is more pleasing to my ears than the carbon fiber is. Now, then what is next? Well, it's the FR4. The FR4 is softer than aluminum, and it's pretty much in the middle of the road kind of plate. Then how does it sound? Let's check it out. Overall, I feel that the FR4 plates have a similar sound profile to aluminum or close to it. It might be slightly deeper and slightly drier sounding, but overall tone I feel is like kind of reminiscent to aluminum. How you can perceive this is kind of considering it to like a softer feeling aluminum plate. That's just my opinion. All right, now that we covered most of the stiffer plates, let's move on to the soft one, shall we? The palm. The palm is actually very close to other soft plastic plates like polycarbonate, very common one, right? These types of plates offer a softer typing experience as well as a deeper sound profile. Plus, palm has this like interesting pop that I feel like PC doesn't really have. So it's actually one of my favorite plates. So let's take a listen. So what do you think about that one? In my opinion, between the four different plates I just tried, my favorite is actually the aluminum and the palm. Both have very lively sounds, yet so different at the same time. So let me know in the description below what you think and what your favorite was. Now, before I leave you, since this was a video about plate sounds, I'll bring out the technical stuff from before and drop it right here for you. 
If you don't want a lesson in like the material sciences, then you can skip this portion, go straight to the end for my final thoughts. So the first thing we want to hit is the stiffness of the plate. This is actually the easiest to determine. There is already a set constant called the Young's modulus that determines how easily the material could bend or stretch. So higher Young's modulus makes it harder to bend or stretch, which also indicates that the material is actually stiffer. This is actually measured in gigapascals. Given this, I created this chart to show some of the most common plate materials and their Young's modulus stiffness. As you can see, it pretty much follows the street convention we know. Steel is very stiff, carbon fiber also, and something like palm or PC is very soft. It's all numerical and objective. Makes a lot of sense, right? Also, this is something we can use to determine what material is thocky or clacky because, if you remember, stiffer materials is higher in frequency than softer ones. This is all great and all, but it only tells one part of the story when it comes to sound. Remember, sound is determined by both stiffness and the mass. So what happens if you look just at the mass? Remember the volume measurement we did of that plate, 42 cubic centimeters? Well, if you have the volume and the density of the material, you can actually easily find its mass. The equation is mass equals density times volume. Given that density for a material is constant and easily searchable, this is the mass I get, and the mass is in grams. So when you sort it by mass and correlate it to sound frequency, things get really weird. If heavier equals more thock, then brass and steel is the most thock? That's not really true. Well, it's because of the fact that you have to consider both stiffness and mass together. Going back to the guitar string example, you can take the thickest E string and tighten it a lot, and take a thinner A string and loosen it up a little bit. Even though the E string should be deeper, in this situation it'll actually sound higher pitched than the thinner A string. The same concept is actually being applied right now to the plate sound as well. So given that, how do we correlate stiffness and mass? It's actually more math actually. Now there's this metric called the specific stiffness. It's a measurement of the stiffness versus the weight ratio. This is actually something very important in the aerospace industry because if you're building an airplane, you want materials that are very stiff and also very light. So if the specific stiffness is high, it means that it's a very stiff material with a very low weight. It's calculated by taking the Young's modulus and then dividing it by its density. This is relatable in this case because stiff and light equals clack and soft and heavy equals thock, right? So a low specific stiffness equals thock and a high specific stiffness equals clack. Specific stiffness in this case is denoted by gigapascals over grams over cubic centimeters. I don't think that really matters too much at this point. So let's take a look. Overall, for the most part, this aligns with our street convention. Something like carbon fiber has a very, very high specific stiffness. We also know that carbon fiber plates are very clacky. On the other hand, something like polycarbonate has a very low specific stiffness. We also know that PC is generally thocky. For me, everything was good, except one thing, brass. I think most of us in this hobby felt that brass is stiff and it should be a clacky plate material. However, because of its heavy weight, according to the calculations, it's actually one of the deeper sounding materials. I was really doubtful, so I also had a chance to review the natural frequency of brass versus aluminum versus steel, and it actually showed that brass had the lowest natural resonant frequency out of the three, so I tried it out. So I guess I can't really fight against science. The brass is definitely much deeper than the aluminum plate, so now I won't doubt. I know that this is probably a bit too much for most people, but now rather than saying, hey, Scott says PC is soft and Mike says carbon fiber is clack, we can look at this chart and say, yup, PC is softer and thockier than palm because it has a specific stiffness value of 2 versus 2.6. I know that this is not the be all end all data because you have to also factor in like interactions and such and there's a lot of things that also impact sound but I think it's a good start, a good start to be objective. So what is the final thought? Well, thank you Evan for sending me out your HH60 for, you know, to test the plates out with. Overall, the HH60 was a great platform to test with because it was just so raw. No foam to alter, no nothing, just pure unadulterated sound. 
Plus, even without all the fillers, the HH60 actually delivered a pretty so good sound profile as well. So it was perfect to test out the different plates with. It was a very neutral platform for me to test. Overall, I know there are like other plates out there as well, but I hope that these four do a pretty good job of representing majority of the popular ones. In my opinion, it's purely subjective, right? But I hope that this video will help you determine what kind of sound you prefer. Oh, one more thing. I know that we associate gasket mounting with softer typing experiences, but honestly, you can also achieve a comfortable typing experience with both the top mount and even this bottom mount design. So check this out. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks.